All right, guys, we're back in my garage for another video. If you're new to the channel, I use these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So today we're going to be talking about the new M2 that was finally revealed this week. BMW put everything out there, so now we know the power, the options that are coming with it, and just basically all of the technical information that you might need if you're interested in buying this vehicle. So I just wanted to make this video to compare the M2 against the new M3 and M4. The thing is that nowadays BMW is making these cars much similar, so it's harder to differentiate between the two outside of a couple primary differences and it just makes it a little bit more difficult for people that are kind of on the fence for which one they want to go with. So I want to give you guys all of the information I have and hopefully if you're trying to make this decision or if you're just curious about the differences between them then hopefully this video can help you out. So the first thing that we learned is the amount of power that's coming in the M2. We all expected it to come with the S58 and of course that was the case. However, even though it has the same engine as the M3 and M4, it does have 20 less horsepower than the base M3 and M4. So this is something that I think, again, we kind of expected. We didn't know where it would actually land, but even compared to the M2 competition in the previous generation, BMW put the same S55 in that car, but it had less power than the M3 and M4 with the same engine. So they do this primarily for marketing, you know, because the 2 Series is a lower tier vehicle. They're going to put the same engine in there with less power so that it doesn't compete or, you know, take away sales from the M3 and M4. So currently the M2 lands right at 453 horsepower, whereas the M3 and M4 come with 473 horsepower. And then we also know that there is a comp version of the M3 and M4 that is over 500 horsepower. The latest news that we have is that the M2 comp should be coming in about two years. So we're expecting in August of 2024, they'll drop the news on that. And it should have a little more power than the current M2, but I still don't expect it to be over 500 it'll probably be closer to around 480 to 485 so it'll land somewhere in the middle of there next we know about the transmission options and great news here is that it does come with both options that are in the m3 and m4 so you can get a zf8 speed automatic or you can get a manual transmission now one of the limiting factors here is that the manual transmission from bmw has always been a little bit underrated so they typically limit their cars based on this transmission offering so I'm expecting when the M2 comp comes out with more power and more torque, it's going to only have the automatic transmission available, just like the M3 and M4. So that's just something to be aware of. If you're interested in a manual, this is probably going to be the option that'll be available to you. A future M2 comp probably won't come with that. Now, on the other hand, they did limit the drivetrain, and this is probably one of the bigger differences between the M3 and M4, is if you get an M3 and M4 comp, it comes with an X drive option. On the M2, that is not the case. Eventually, again, the M2 comp will probably come with an X drive option, if not standard, but for now, it's only rear wheel drive. So if you were one of the people that were banking on that X drive cheat code to get really good launches on the street and things like that, that's not something that we're going to have right at launch. I still think the car will have really good driving dynamics, and especially for people that are interested in going to road courses or autocross, the best way to have it will probably be with a rear wheel drivetrain. That's probably the option that I would go with if I was getting one. But now I just know that after a lot of people got over that initial shock and everybody freaking out about there being an X-Drive M3, now it seems to be pretty widely adopted and most people are actually interested in that version. So now we can move on to something a little bit more subjective, being the looks. I already talked about my feelings a little bit when the M2 pictures were leaked a couple weeks ago. I still pretty much feel the same except for one main thing. In the videos, the car looks way wider. The fenders and quarter panels look much more dramatic, which was something I commented on. I just felt like from the pictures, it looked completely flat and just not really something that would attract any attention. The only thing I did notice was that the side skirts seemed to come out a lot, but in the videos that they've released, you can really see that the side skirts taper into the wider hips on the M2. So that's definitely something that I was happy to see. I think it'll have a much stronger presence in person because of that but it's still missing a lot of the other details that we would look for with a more aggressive body style 
The previous M2 just really nailed it, in my opinion, and this one leaves a little bit to be desired. I do think that it's nice that they didn't put the big grills on the M2, but even without them, I think it looks a little less cohesive than the M3 and M4. If you look at the M3 from all angles, it really looks like one car that was designed by one team and everybody worked together to produce the finished product. Whereas the M2, it almost looks like from each angle, somebody else was prioritizing something different. There are a lot of awkward features that are really pronounced and pulling in a lot of attention when I don't really think they need to. So yeah, I mean, I just think that there's a little bit of room to improve on that. Maybe with the M2 comp, a little bit of dressing up from in performance parts, we should be able to see a better looking car. Now for weight, we are seeing not as big of a penalty as we probably would have expected or wanted, but compared to like the 3 Series and 2 Series for the regular vehicles, we know that there isn't that big of a weight difference between them, and it's the same thing for the M2 compared to the M3 and M4. The M2 in a manual transmission rear wheel drive platform starts at around 3750 and it goes up to around 3,800 pounds, whereas the M3 and M4 start at around 3,850 with the manual transmission rear-wheel drive base package, and with an X-Drive comp, it gets up to 3,950. So with a fully loaded vehicle, it's a lot heavier than an M2, but I think people were hoping for at least 200 pounds difference, if not more, but being less than that in a lot of cases makes it just seem like it's not that really big of a difference. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about are options, and this is something that I think BMW, again, is struggling with. They're making these cars more similar, which makes it harder to pick between them. They're constantly making more options available to lower tier vehicles, while the more expensive higher tier vehicles don't seem to be getting that revolutionary of upgrades being available. And I really think that's the same case here. So for example, they both have the carbon fiber roof option. BMW is actually even starting to put this in some of the M light vehicles. So they talked about the G42 M240i is gonna have a carbon fiber roof option as well in the next year or two. They both also have the upgraded carbon fiber bucket seats available, as well as the new LCI interior. Although I will say the M2 is only offered with the LCI interior. If you really are just dead set on getting a vehicle with the previous interior, then you can still get an earlier G80 or G82 used and get the same power with the interior that you're looking for. So on the other hand, there are gonna be a couple differences, mostly in like the higher end features. So for example, the two series doesn't come with a powered lift gate. So if that's something that's important to you, being able to make it close on its own by the push of a button, you won't be able to get that in the M2. It also doesn't come with the laser headlights, which I think are really nice, but probably not that much of a game changer compared to the standard LED lights. It looks better, especially with the shadow line option on the M3 and M4 but on the M2, it still looks pretty clean in my opinion, even though it doesn't follow the traditional halo design. And then just like the previous M2, there are basically no color options. It only has five. I think it's like black, white, silver, red, and that blue that it was unveiled in. In this case, you're going to be much more limited compared to the M3 and M4 that come with green and yellow and all of these other really vibrant colors, as well as frozen colors that you can just order directly from the website. So if you're looking for something a little bit louder and a little bit more unique, it's going to be a struggle and you're going to have to basically pay for an individual option with an M2. I do expect this to be at least $10,000 less than the regular M3 and M4, which should be nice because a fully loaded M3 goes over 100k and there's absolutely no reason why an M2 should be able to get that high. Even if it gets up to the 80s to 90s, it's going to be kind of a stretch for most people for that kind of vehicle, but things are just really getting competitive nowadays. So we'll see as time goes on what the pricing looks like and how many options and features you can put on there to really load it up. But I think for most people, it'll probably be in the low $80,000 range. So yeah, those are all the differences that we know of right now. Definitely keep an eye out for the new M2 comp that's supposed to be coming out in the next two years. If you guys are looking for that, then it's probably worth the wait. Maybe you can just take this opportunity to experience the G80 or G82, lease it for two or three years until the M2 comp comes out and then switch to that. Or we can just be patient and save up our coins so that we have more money for modifications once it does drop. But yeah, that's it for this video. So thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.